Chapter two, lesson one, rational numbers. Today we're seeing that we have the same standard we had before with our seven NS1, add and subtract rational numbers. In this chapter, we'll have seven NS2 as well. And today you can see we got seven NS3, solving mathematical problems using the four operations. So what we wanna deal with is we're gonna deal with this vocab today, right here, the word rational numbers, what we're really gonna work with. And in lesson one, we're gonna split it into two different lessons. So here's where we go with the first one. So to start with, we're gonna talk with a rational number. That's what this whole chapter is about. It's a number that can be written as the ratio of two integers. Circle up that word ratio, and then write down and the reminder that that word ratio means that it can be written as a fraction. So rational numbers can be anything like a fraction, positive or negative, like negative three fourths. Remind yourself, it can also be a number like eight, because eight as a fraction is the number eight over one. So it is a rational number. That's why eight works, because it can be written as a fraction. It can be written as a ratio. And then another example quick, whether positive or negative doesn't matter, but 0.1 or more prop properly read as one tenth, that decimal can be written as a fraction. In fact, that's the second part of this lesson that we'll be doing. But today, talking about rational numbers, we've got two types of def decimals, excuse me there. When we look at our decimals, we've got the one that terminates. To terminate means to end. It means it's going to stop, much like our example up here with that point 0.1, how that one terminates. It ends. That's how we know it's a terminating decimal. And then repeating decimals repeat some sort of pattern and it continuously repeats like 0.33333333333333333333 and forever and ever and ever is 0.3. And then to show this repeating pattern, we have that line over the top referred to as bar notation. We must be very careful with that because this is also a repeating pattern, but with bar notation, notice that bar notation is over what number? So over the six and only the six. So this guy is point one six 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 forever and ever and ever. Only the six repeats. And then for fun, we can put in one two three with the line over all top of them. Notice that bar notation is over all of them. That decimal is one two three one two three one two three. That's the pattern that continues. Today we're going to be doing that with this lesson. We're going to be talking about changing a rational number, more specifically a fraction, to a decimal. Now, our hope is that we can change that denominator to something like 10. So if you want to make the note, you can put down here, up top or off to the side, our goal is to make it 10 or to make it 100, it being the denominator. If not, then we are doomed to our only other option, and our only other option then which works every time is long division. So looking over here at this guy, can we take nine times something to make 10? That's what we wanna do up here. No, can we take nine times something to make 100? Nope, we cannot. So then we are stuck and we are doomed to long division. When we talk long division, the important thing is what comes first. In class, I made everybody say first, so he'll do it the same, say first. The first number is your dividend. It's the number inside the long division house. Then we got this other number out here. That's your divisor. That number goes on the outside. And now we get going. Good habit. Ask yourself, how many times can nine go into two? It cannot. It's zero. And then that's where we're going to add in this zero down here, but we need to keep this to be two. The important number is the first number. The first number was two. So leave that as two or 2.0. As soon as you put a decimal, put it up there in your answer where the quotient is. Again, quotient being the answer to a division problem. And now we continue on. How many times can nine go into 20? It's two times. Nine times two is 18. Subtract that, a remainder. So add another zero. Bring it down. Arrow is optional, but bring the zero in. Notice the zero was added on the inside of our division. It was added to the 
div dividend, excuse me, was added inside. Don't put it on top. Nine goes into 22 times. Oh, look, a pattern. As soon as you notice it, stop. If you don't notice it, then keep adding zeros until you see it. But notice up here, we've got this pattern. Those twos up here are repeating. So then we're going to come over here and write our answer as 0 0.2 repeating. With that bar notation over the 2 because the 2 tenths is repeating. But as you look at that, don't forget, since that original fraction was negative, make sure yours is also negative. When we're looking at that, that's what we're going to do right there. So that's what we have down here. We've got this 3 and 1 fifth. So wherever you're going to put your answer, please put that whole number 3. So we're going to do 3 point, well now 1 fifth. You're welcome to do long division if you want to over here, but you don't need to do that because can we take 5 times something to make 10? We can. That's important because now we have tenths. And tenths is the first decimal place. So when you see this 2 tenths, that is point. 2. 3 and 2 tenths. 3.2. Again, since that original number was positive, you can box that up. That's what we're looking at. Got a couple extra practice here we can take a look at. And again, as we're doing these, our hope is that we can change that bottom number into a 10. So we're hoping, can we change the bottom number into 10 or 100? or even a thousand if possible. And if not, if we can't, then we are doomed, not doomed, but you just have to do long division. So again, in long division, what number comes first is important. Since that seven is first, the seven goes on the inside. It is your divisor, excuse me, your dividend. And on the outside is that divisor of eight. Good habit, how many times can eight go into seven? It can't, that's why we add the decimal and add the zero on the inside. Eight goes into seven. Again, five times. No, that's 40. That doesn't work. Six times. So that's 48. Feel free to guess and check. What we're looking at here, that one's going to go in there eight times. Eight times eight is 64. Got a remainder. So again, add the zero, bring it on in. Eight goes into 60. Seven times, that's with 56 remainder. Four, so add another zero in, bring it on down. And then we've got that five. Keep going until you get that remainder of zero down there. Now again, notice as I'm writing this, try to keep these numbers here lined up. Nice and lined up as place values. As you look at it, if you're like me and your house, that dividing thing has run out of space, just extend the line. And again, we've got that decimal. I'm gonna emphasize that there. You're welcome to box up your answer there, or you can rewrite it if you want. Notice again, 7 eighths was originally positive, so our answer is positive. Over here on number 12, again, if we can get something to take 11 and make it into 10 or 100 or 1,000, we do that. If not, we are going to be stuck doing long division, where again, that first number goes on the inside, and then that outside number, here's your divisor, the denominator, and away we go. 11 cannot go into 1, so put a 0, and before you add that 0 on your inside, in your dividend, please add a decimal, and a 0 up there, inside, put a decimal up top. Now we're checking how many times can 11 go into 10? Well, it can't, so since it can't, that's why we put a 0 on top. However, we put another zero inside with our dividend. As we look at how many times 11 can go into 100, and that is nine. Take away the 99, we're left with one. Add a zero on the inside. Add a zero in that dividend. Don't put it up top where your quotient is. Don't put it up there. Put it here in the dividend. Extend that line if you need to. How many times can 11 go into 10? Well, it can't. So it goes in zero times. That's why that zero goes on top, but we add a zero here when we need it, bring that zero down. 11 goes into 100 nine times, and there's a pattern there. Again, careful, what is repeating up there? Notice when we're looking at repeating, it's not just the nine that's repeating, it's the nine and the zero. So when we write out that answer, 0 0.09, 
our bar notation needs to be over both of the numbers. If you don't think it's quite over both, fix it quick. Put it on in there. 0 0.09 repeating, 0 and 9 hundredths repeating. Since it was positive, we'll leave it positive. And I'm just going to slide them up here a little bit so we can see these again. Going on, doing some more practice here. So again, we're going to look here. Can we take 9 times something to make 100? Nope. 1,000? Nope. 10? Nope. So then we're going to do long division. Make sure that 7 goes on the inside. The first number is your dividend on the inside. The bottom number that you're dividing by is your divisor. Can 9 go into 7? No. That's why that 0 goes there. But before you add a 0 inside, add that decimal. 9 goes into 70. Hmm, 8 times. No, that's too many times. So 7 times. 7 times 9 is 63. The remainder 7. And the dividend on the inside, add that zero, bring it down. Mr. Walls, I noticed something. Great. As soon as you notice it, stop. You see it's repeating. We got a repeating decimal. Great. We're right in your final answer then. And 0 0.7 with the bar notation over the top, 7 tenths repeating. Notice again, though, before you box it up, since up here it was negative, make sure your answer has a negative sign in it. Last example I have in our notes, negative 17 over 40. So uh, again, uh, 40 can't become 10, 40 times something to make 100. No, not really, 40 something, I don't know. Here we go, let's just divide it on out. Larger numbers, don't have to be too afraid of them. We put them um, out here in the dividend, sorry, the divisor. 40 cannot go into 17. But how many times can 40 go into 170. That's where feel free to go off to the side and write out multiples. 40, 80, 120. We're just adding 40. What's 120 plus 40? 160, 200. Oh, that's too many times. So 40 goes into 170 without going over. One, two, three, four times. Put a four up there. Again, we can look back here. We can see what the 140 times four is. 160, great. Subtract it away. Notice here how our remainder is less than the divisor. The bottom number is less than the number on the outside. Needs to be that way. That means we've done it correctly. Now we're going to add another zero and bring it on down. How many times can 40 go into 100? We can look over here and see that it goes in twice without going over. So that's the 2. 40 times 2 is 80. We're left with 20. Add another 0. Bring it down. 40 goes into 200. Five times. Again, you can see that over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers to get to 200. So then we'll put that 5 here. Subtract the 200. We have no remainder. So there's your answer. Feel free to box it up there or rewrite it. Now, again, you can see there's some extra examples here that we're just going to bypass because we're going to look here that we're talking about our rational number. That's all we're going to work with today. We're going to get working on adding later rational numbers. We're going to work on later subtracting rational numbers. But right now today, we're just going to work with rational numbers. So all these extra examples, we're going to bypass all of these and then just talk about today that you can convert rational numbers to decimals.